the Toronto Raptors have reportedly shown interest in Andre Drummond. So in this video, we're going to look at if the Toronto Raptors should make a trade for the Cavaliers big man. Let's get into it. Welcome to Amateur Sports, everybody. This is a channel where you get NBA content with a focus on the Toronto Raptors. So if you like what you see from today's video and you want more of myself talking about the Raptors in videos just like this, make sure you hit that subscribe button down below. Show your support to the channel. We're getting very close to 2,100 subscribers and we look to hit 3,000 by the start of April. You can help us get there. We also do a bunch of live streams on the channel, so make sure you check them out for watch longs for raptors games we have a lot of fun with them and i encourage you to be there and get that extra little bit of content and it's a lot of fun to hang out there but let's get into our topic board today we're talking about andre drummond and the toronto raptors have reportedly shown some interest in the big man now we're going to look at if the toronto raptors should be making a trade for him this season or if that is the best decision for the franchise a lot of people ask me like almost every day i get questions regarding Andre Drummond for the Raptors trade for Andre Drummond is Andre Drummond the right guy for the Raptors and finally something I've been wanting to do for a while is get the video out regarding the topic so the Toronto Raptors in the summer obviously we all know the story we are saving up our cap space to sign Giannis in free agency after this season but Giannis decided to wait and wait and wait and then finally extend his contract with the Milwaukee Bucks for whatever didn't matter. He signed the extension, and the Toronto Raptors, as a result, could not pay Serge Ibaka, and they had already lost Mark Gasol in the offseason as well. So Toronto lost both of their big men, so they went into the free agent market, grabbed Aaron Baines, who initially I thought was going to be a great pickup for the Raptors because Aaron Baines, a guy on the Suns who could stretch out the floor, you know, shoot the three ball at above 35%, set some hard screens, get a few rebounds, be a bit of a rim protector at the other end, and it just hasn't quite worked out. You know, Aaron Baines has been a lot better very recently, but I think it's very telling, especially from that Boston game, that we need better from that position. Aaron Baines probably won't get his team option picked up at the end of this season, and it's unfortunate that it just didn't quite work out. But I don't want to lose him. I think he's a suitable backup big, but that's just what he's been throughout his entire career. He's just been a backup big, and there's nothing wrong with that. But the Toronto Raptors, if they want to be a playoff team and they want to be a little bit more competitive, need to go after a big man. So Andre Drummond, why not? One of the most formidable big men in the league in terms of being a big man getting rebounds and getting points down low in the paint. You know, the the traditional big man is what we'll call Andre Drummond. But the 2021 NBA is kind of drifting away from that sort of big man. Andre Drummond averages, what, 18 points a game, 14 rebounds a game, somewhere like that. So the Toronto Raptors are looking at this traditional big man when they've more so in the last couple of years had, you know, a modern big man, ones who could stretch out the floor. But is Andre Drummond the guy for the Raptors? He just picked up his player option with the Cavaliers on his contract he's making about 29 million dollars a year and for a guy who's not quite fitting the mold of the modern NBA 29 million dollars is a lot of money it's a lot of money for any player for that matter maybe five six years ago Andre Drummond was a guy you could look at for that max contract that you could really build your team around but the NBA has just drifted away from this sort of player not to say that he doesn't have any effect on winning or any effect on games but that's just the reality of the situation his style of play does not fit the 2021 NBA, but a rim protector, a very good rim protector, like an elite rim protector and an elite big man down low, that is what Andre Drummond is. And that is pretty much what the Raptors could use right now. However, again, the problem is going to be the huge huge contract. $29 million is a lot of money to trade for during the season. The Raptors don't really have a lot of the assets in order to make that trade happen. So when you look at Andre Drummond, bringing in Andre Drummond to the Toronto Raptors, well, first of all, you have to make a trade actually work out because you got to balance out salaries. $29 million is a lot of money. And if you want to acquire a lot of money, you have to give a lot of money. And the big, the big hitters on the Raptors who have a lot of money, on their contracts are Kyle Lowry, Pascal Siakam, Fred Van Vliet, and maybe you could talk about OG and Anobi in that discussion, but those are the guys who realistically that you would have to get rid of in order to make some sort of trade happen. You know, make it easier. And in my opinion, in my opinion, as far as the Raptors go, 
Pascal Siakam, OG Ananobi, and Fred Van Vliet are untouchable or near untouchable in these trade negotiations. These guys are locked in with the Raptors for another four years. That is the core that the Raptors need to be building around for the next four years. That's how they're going to become contenders again. Building around these players, Freddie, Siakam, and OG. So, don't think they should trade him. So that leaves us with Kyle Lowry. Now, Kyle Lowry, the greatest Raptor of all time. Would you want to move him to Cleveland? Is that the sort of situation you want to put him in after all the years of service that he did to the Raptors? That is not something I would do. I would want Kyle Lowry to have a huge say in where he goes if he were to be traded. If you want to check out my video on Kyle Lowry and if he's getting traded, you can feel free to do so. The link is just above. But Kyle Lowry, I want him to have a say in where he goes. And I think that the best spot for him would be Philadelphia or just simply staying with the Raptors I wouldn't rush to make a move there so Andre Drummond so there you go there's a lot of asking price there's a lot of money that you have to spend in order to get Andre Drummond and Andre Drummond's on an expiring contract so sure Kyle Lowry's expiring contract would kind of make sense but I want to trade Kyle Lowry to Cleveland and these other guys like the other guys who are making a ton of money in the Raptors are locked in why would we want an expiring contract in Andre Drummond coming through the door. Expiring contracts or rental players are the kind of players you go for when you're really trying to make that that extra little bit of push for a huge playoff run or an NBA championship. And sure, Andre Drummond would maybe help the Raptors, but how much better do the Raptors become by acquiring Drummond? Like, how much better is this Raptors team when Andre Drummond comes in? Or if Andre Drummond comes in? Because right now the Raptors are, you know, a low playoff seed and they're playing a lot better since they started 2 and 8. They're 10 and 6 since starting 2 and 8. And they're only two games behind 500. I think that eventually they will get to that 500 mark, just, just the way they've been playing recently. But the Raptors. How good is this team going to be? Like, what is their ceiling? We got to be realistic as Raptors fans. You know, this was always going to be a transition year. We were saving up cap space in hopes of acquiring Giannis Antetokounmpo in the offseason. Now, that didn't happen, but this still is a transition year where we're going to kind of feel it out and then see in the offseason how good we can make ourselves for next season. But we still want to remain competitive this season, be the best team we can be, and help our core guys like again freddie og and siakam help those guys improve to something better so we're still trying to be a good team but how good can we be i think the ceiling for this raptors team is a second round playoff exit that is just reality of the situation i think that they are a bottom four playoff seed here i think the raptors will end up being either the fifth or the sixth seed and i think that if you get into a playoff situation, I think the Raptors are talented enough to, you know, maybe beat a higher seed in the first round. But when it comes to the second round, I just think they will be a little bit outmatched in a seven-game series. They just simply don't have the talent that they've had in other years. And they, they look a little bit disoriented on the Raptors team right now. Uh, they don't quite look like themselves. I just don't think that this team will make an extended playoff run. Now, you have to look at will Andre Drummond, especially with the asking price, Will Andre Drummond change that situation for the Raptors? If Andre Drummond came in, would the Raptors all of a sudden look way better? Would the Raptors all of a sudden be that contender in the Eastern Conference? The way teams are playing, the way the Philadelphia 76ers are playing, the way the Nets are stacked up, the way the Bucks are stacked up, and I think the Nets will make trades to sort everything out because they've become a lot worse in trading for James Harden. But regardless, a lot of talent in the Eastern Conference, not to mention as well the Boston Celtics. So... Would the Raptors all of a sudden become that contender by acquiring Andre Drummond? I would say they aren't. I don't think Andre Drummond makes that ceiling any higher. Again, Andre Drummond, undoubtedly a great player, but he's not quite the modern big man that really changes the narrative for your team. Andre Drummond, again, is a fine player, but does he put the Raptors beyond what I've already predicted their ceiling to be this season, that second round playoff exit? Like, absolute ceiling is a second round playoff exit. I don't think he changes that situation. And also the fact that the Raptors would have to give away quite a bit in order to get Andre Drummond. Like, they'd have to give away money and they'd have to give away picks first round picks and that is probably the most valuable asset to the Toronto Raptors the Raptors are known for drafting well and developing players like the Raptors when they won the NBA championship didn't have a single player that was selected in a lottery position. That is an absolutely ridiculous stat because what they do, they do well with their picks. They have late first round picks, but they do well with those picks to acquire great players like Siakam, absolute sleeper late in the draft. Same with OG Ananobi. Norman Powell was a second rounder and guys like Fred Van Vliet are undrafted. The Raptors scouts are what makes their money. The Raptors scouting is how they become 
good teams. The development is how they become a good team. And these picks are what is going to help us rebuild into a better contender because the Raptors, sure, the transition year is here and the Raptors seemingly don't fare well in free agency stuff. They just don't acquire the big talent. Maybe that will change Maybe that will change this offseason. Maybe that will change in the future. At the moment, we cannot bank on getting the big free agents in the summer. So the Raptors' assets that are valuable to them, more valuable to them than to other teams, are their first round picks, which you'd probably have to give away in order to acquire an expiring contract for Andre Drummond. So wouldn't want to give away picks, wouldn't really want to give away a lot of assets in terms of our players, and I don't think Andre Drummond really changes the narrative of how our team is going to perform over the course of the season. I think that our team is just simply destined to be a first or second round playoff exit. And that's the reality. Obviously, I want that to change. And I'm hopeful that the Raptors can overcome that and be better. But as a realistic Raptors fan, you have to understand from, from this business standpoint, from an organizational standpoint, that you're giving away too much to acquire a guy on an expiring contract. Now, people would say maybe Andre Drummond would extend with the Raptors. Maybe he would re-sign with the Raptors. I think Andre Drummond is done playing for non contenders like those big superstar teams the contender teams i think andre drummond is just done playing for a team that is not going to win an nba championship i'm sure this guy is number one looking for the bag which you know raptors in the offseason maybe could afford but he's also looking for a ring he's definitely looking for a ring i think he's going to be a little bit ring hunting i think he's gonna be willing to take a pay cut in order to get that ring because you know, as players get older, their hunger to get a ring becomes very much more apparent. They are looking to get that ring before it's all said and done in their career. And I think Andre Drummond is looking for that. I really, really doubt that Andre Drummond would re-sign with the Raptors if we were to trade for him. So, you know, there's a lot of reasons here supporting not trading for Andre Drummond. And I would not trade for Andre Drummond. Number one, you got to give away some good players. Number two, you got to give away first-round picks or one first-round pick. But the Raptors use those picks and do very well with those first round picks despite their position you know other teams who don't say draft very well like you know maybe we'll talk about the the clippers or the lakers who are very high seeds in the nba they're not going to be drafting fantastically from those positions year in year out but the raptors you know over the last what five six seven years or so have a great return on the players they draft, even late on in the first round, even some second rounders as well. Obviously, there's going to be one or two blemishes like Bruno Caboclo, but the Raptors typically do quite well with those picks. So those are huge assets for the Raptors. And the fourth reason, Andre Drummond probably wouldn't even re-sign with the Raptors at the end of the season. He'd probably look somewhere else. So you're giving away a lot to acquire a lot of money that would kind of hurt your team, I think, for the future. And also, it's only a rental option and this player doesn't really make your team a whole lot better he would obviously make it better and obviously I would love to have Andre Drummond on the team like obviously you want good players on your team but I just don't think he would make the Raptors better enough like like enough of an increase in quality in their team for this trade to make sense so again I know a lot of you guys really want Andre Drummond to the Raptors I just personally don't think it makes sense but let me know all of your thoughts and opinions on this situation in the comments down below but that wraps it up for me for today Thank you so much for watching. If you're still here, please like the video. If you like and subscribe to Amateur Sports for more content just like this, we got a ton of Raptors videos. We got a ton of Raptors live streams. So if you are a basketball Raptors fan, make sure that you stick around on the channel. Show your support. Let's hit 3,000 subscribers by the start of April. That's a bit of a lofty goal, but I think that we can get there. At the end of the day, I believe what I say. If you disagree, that is okay. We'll see you again next time for another video.